In order for any microcontroller board to run, it needs to have software. In the case of the Cutie Pie RP2040 microcontroller, the software that controls it is called CircuitPython. CircuitPython is a special distribution of Python developed by Adafruit specifically to be used on microcontroller boards. To understand why we need to have a special version of Python, we need to think about what the normal Python is like. The standard Python installation, which is called CPython, takes about 90 megabytes of space on a hard drive. For most modern computers, that's a drop in the bucket. They may have memory available for storage of up to a terabyte. However, the Cutie Pie RP2040 only has 8 megabytes of flash memory on board. This is actually a rather large amount of memory for a microcontroller board. Many of them have a lot less memory than this, but even with this relatively large amount of memory, it's clear to see that a standard CPython installation is not going to fit in the memory, let alone the code that's required to run the microcontroller board itself. There are several features of CircuitPython that are designed specifically for operating with microcontroller boards. In this picture, you can see a typical configuration where the Cutie Pie 2040 is connected to a laptop by USB cable, and then it's connected to some kind of a sensor by another cable. That's a typical use for a board to collect data from a sensor. CircuitPython enables this by having stripped down Python code. As I said previously, that's necessary because of the relatively small amount of space on the board. It's not just the Python distribution, however, it also effectively serves as like an operating system for the microcontroller board, similar to Windows or Mac OS, only again in a very stripped down version. Because CircuitPython is typically used for running sensors, there are a number of code libraries that are designed specifically to support about 300 different kinds of devices that you can connect to the Cutie Pie. It also has built into it simplified communication with your laptop or whatever kind of computer you're using to connect via the USB. That is necessary because, as you can tell, the microcontroller board doesn't have a keyboard or a display, and the communication that you have with it is going to have to be done using your laptop's keyboard and display. Therefore, having this connection through USB is really important. The other feature, which is a bit odd but also makes sense in the context of a microcontroller board, is that the Python code that's actually being run is in a special file called code.py that automatically gets launched, unlike a normal Python distribution where you would execute some kind of command in order to launch the code, the code launches automatically. Again, this is to facilitate the problem that we don't have a connected keyboard in which case we would be able to use a keyboard to run the program. So it's possible to run a board like this on batteries not connected to anything. So clearly there needs to be some way to start up the code if you don't have any peripherals connected to it. This diagram shows you the main parts of the Cutie Pie RP2040. At the heart of everything is the RP2040 processor, which again, is the processor that's used in a Raspberry Pi. In this case, there's a lot less other circuitry on the board than on a Raspberry Pi. There is a key piece, the eight megabyte flash memory chip. This is where programs are stored. This is also where you can save data if you enable that. The communication is done between the laptop and the board through the USB cable. So you can edit the programs that are stored on the memory chip. You can also get the output of the code when it's running through the serial console, which is displayed on the laptop screen. On the other side, there is a connection called a Stemma QT connection that is used to connect the QtPi to whatever kind of sensor you're using. 
So typically the direction of the data transfer is from the sensor to the board, and that either gets passed through the laptop display through the serial port, or it might get um, saved into memory. You can also communicate the other way by telling the sensors to do things, but most of the communication is being sent from the sensor to the board.